Hello, and welcome to the world of Infinite Santa 8000. I am head animator Michael Neal. In the last tutorial, we talked about parenting and how we use it to put characters together and animate objects. In this tutorial, we'll talk about nulls and how we use them. Deciding when and how to use a null is one of the most important choices you can make in your animation. A null lets you affect something without changing its basic animation. Sound confusing? It's not. Let's check it out. All right, so I'm gonna show you a clip from the movie. The evil Easter Bunny has captured Martha and he is flying away with her in his Easter themed scooter. Santa is flying in his sleigh, chasing the bunny and trying to get Martha back. Let's watch the clip. <laughs> She's mine now, you hot belly fool. I'll scramble your eggs, bad bunny! Hey, Santa, I'll color my eggs with your blood. So now I'm going to break down a specific shot and show you how we put it together. First off, I'm going to show you the high res QuickTime file. So there we go. So I'll preview the shot for you. As always, you'll see that I'm playing at a quarter resolution. This is for the system speed, so the previews go faster. So I'll play it for you, and you'll notice that the shot is actually much longer than what we ended up using in the film, because in this scene, we made all the shots longer so that it was easier to edit. We weren't sure exactly how they would fit together, and this was the easiest way to do it. So I'll hit stop. Before I go on, as always, all the layers are 3D layers, every single one. This allows us to do more precise movement. So let me show you the layers. We have the null sleigh. We have Santa. We have the bunny's null, right there, right here. We have the bunny, and we have the background. So I'll turn off the background for now because it'll make our previewing faster. So the big question is, what is a null? A null is an invisible layer, but you can still use most of the transformation properties. Let me show you. I'll solo this null for the sleigh, and I'll zoom in, and I'll open up the transformation properties here. Now, you'll notice that we've used position properties. You can see it go up and down right here. You can also change the Z rotation, like that. You can change the orientation. You can change the anchor point. And you can change the scale. But one thing it does not do, when you preview it, it doesn't show up in the animation. So the reason you'd use a null is because you parent other things to it. It's a way of spreading out your movement to make your life easier. Let me show you how it works. So I'll go to Fit to Screen so we can see everything again. And I will select Santa's Precomp. So in this case, what we decided to do with the null is to use this null for the bouncing of Santa's sleigh. See, that's how it goes. If I walk through it, you can see how the sleigh moves in conjunction with the null. Now let's say, for example, that we turned it off, that we decided not to use the null. You can see here that the sleigh is parented to the null in the parenting drop-down menu, so I'll remove it by going to None, and I'll turn on the background. Now let's watch it, and keep in mind that the bunny still has the null on, but Santa doesn't. Now, it looks like Santa is just kind of floating in the air, and it doesn't have much much of the illusion that he's flying, especially if you compare it to the bunny in the background, which looks much more convincing. So in this case, that's why we did it. Now I'll go and I will reattach the parenting of the sleigh to the null again, and I'll solo these two layers, and I'll turn off the background just to make sure it stays off for later. So the big question is now, why do we use a null to do this bouncing movement 
instead of doing it on the sleigh itself. Well, there's a very good reason for this. You'll notice the only keyframes we have on the sleigh are these position keyframes here and here. You can see it right there, and then the sleigh just stays in one place. Now let's say, for example, we wanted to do the bouncing on the sleigh layer. So first off, it'd be very tricky to do it in between these keyframes. And, and you'll see why in a second. So let me start doing it here. Now the first thing I would do is hit this diamond over here to add or remove a keyframe. Now you'll notice that the keyframe here has an hourglass shape, unlike the ones up here, which have a diamond shape. I won't go into exactly why that is now, but basically there are different ways that keyframes can operate with regards to the speed that they make things move. I go into this a lot more in future tutorials, so I can explain it more there. So what I'll do is go to a menu, right-click, keyframe interpolation, and change it to linear. You don't need to know what this stuff means, but now it turns back to the diamond. So if you notice up here, this null goes up and down in a repeating pattern. Up, down, up, down, up, down. So that's what I'll do with Santa's sleigh. So I'll take it off, I'll remove the parenting to the null, and now I'll try to do it by hand. So it seems that there's one, two frames in between each keyframe, one, two. So that's what I'll do here. I'll take that keyframe, go one, two, and set another one. Now, the next one I'll do will be lower, so I'll take the Y axis here. Now remember, all of our layers are in three dimensions, so that gives us access to these tools. Y axis, X axis, and Z axis. These are what they sound like. Y goes up and down. X goes back and forth, left to right. Z goes forward and back with depth. So in this case, let's make the next part of the bounce go down. So I'll grab the Y here and bring it down. So it goes straight. Even if I pull left or right, it only goes straight down. So now I have a new keyframe down here. I'll go forward two, one, two with page down. Copy this one by hitting Command C. And then hitting Command V to paste it. This is the same technique you might use in Microsoft Word, Final Cut, Premiere, Photoshop, etc. So now I've highlighted all three. I'll hit Command C again, Command V, and they'll all paste here. I'll do it again. Go to the last keyframe. I'll zoom out with the minus key so I can see more of the keyframes. I'll keep doing it. Copy, paste, copy, paste. And that's good for now. OK, so now let's see what this did to our animation. So Santa's going to fly in and then start bouncing. Let's set the work area here by hitting N. This is the work area up here. So we'll just show the animation that we've done and not the whole shot. All right, so it looks a little weird since he flies in and then starts bouncing. But let's ignore that for a second. So let's say that at this point, I want Santa to fly up into the corner. So what I really need to do is make sure that all the frames go up at once. So I'll select them, a whole bunch of them, and bring them up. Let's preview. Now they go up and stay there, and then they come back down, which I don't want. So let's say I want to bring it somewhere else. So I'll select these keyframes that start right after the ones I just did and move the playhead to that point in time where I want to change them. And I'll drag it over here. Now let's preview it. So yeah, it moves around. It's pretty fast. And the thing is, it doesn't give me a whole lot of control about how quickly things move from one position to another. So let's say in these last keyframes here, I want the transition from that to that from this position here to be much slower. Well, I'd grab these keyframes and slide them over. And let's see what that does. So it bounces and it flies up. And it goes over more slowly. All right, that's cool. But then let's say I want to change the speed at which this sleigh moves from here up to here. 
Now, first off, I can't just look at it and figure out where it is because every one of these keyframes visually looks exactly the same. So that's frustrating. It would be nice to look at it and just see what happens. So I have to go through frame by frame and find the one where it moves. It appears to be this one right here. So I'll highlight these and move them over and try to change it. Yep, and then I've messed up this one over here. These keyframes are closer, so now the speed in between is faster, so I have to slide these over. And as you can see, this is starting to get really tricky. And if you can imagine, you know, this is a pretty simple example, but if you can imagine that you're doing much more intricate animation, and you come back to something like this an hour in and want to change something, you might start to make some big mistakes and have to go back over your tracks and figure out what you did and you can erase lots of work like this so this is a really bad example of how to do it so what I'll do is I'll delete these keyframes and show you why the null makes things much easier I'll go back to the beginning and I'll parent this back to the null like that now I'll preview it yep the null's playing just like it always has and let's say now I want to achieve the same kind of animation. So I want Santa's sleigh to move up into the top right. Let's try it maybe at a different rate. Let's see. Let's see what it looks like this. So I'll play it. Yeah, it moves up gradually. That's kind of nice. And then I want it to move back here again. So I grab it back there, create this keyframe right here, and I'll preview it. Oh yeah, that's good. And wait, hold on a second. Maybe I want to make the transition from here to here much faster. I'll grab this keyframe and slide it over. And let's see what it does. Goes up gradually and then flies over. So you can see already I have much more control over what I'm doing. I don't have to worry about giant groups of keyframes at once and missing something. And almost most importantly, visually, I can see exactly where the points are. It's just so much easier. And this is also useful for scale. Let's say I want him to go up here and then I want the sleigh to shrink before it moves back again. I can set a keyframe with a stopwatch, go forward a little bit and make it smaller. I'll preview. Goes up, shrinks. Great, and now I think I want to make the, the shrinking take longer, so I'll drag this keyframe over. Play again. Yep. Look how much control we have over the motion, and we never have to worry about this bouncing. You know, the bouncing is a detail that makes it makes it seem real, but it's not something that I really want to worry about once I've gotten it right. And let's say at the bottom I want to rotate it. Well, I'll set another keyframe with the stopwatch right here. Go forward, and this time I'll rotate it so it goes like this. And I'll preview it again. Yeah, so we have all that nice movement, and you can see every single one down here. So much easier. There we are. Nulls are so useful. They'll show up again and again in these tutorials, so you'll see a lot of examples of how we use them. So long from the year 8000.